Church, welcome to our devotion today. I want to ask the question, what matters to you the most? When you think about today and everything that you're going to do today, what of importance is lying ahead for you? You know, if you're like me, you have an agenda, you have a list that you're considering, you have some tasks, perhaps some appointments that you need to be aware of. Um, you're going to work, you're um, taking a, a break, whatever it may be. Uh, and, and, and then we're thinking about our, our family, we're thinking about, hey, what's on the menu for dinner? Or uh, thinking about the task of making it and cleaning it up to uh, what, what are we going to do as a family tonight? Maybe you're drifting into the thought of the holidays coming up and what should I get so-and-so or uh, uh, what should we be doing for that party? Even in the midst of this COVID time, we want to get together with family and friends and those kinds of things. Maybe decorating, tree trimming, setting up your home. All these things are flooding your mind. And then something happens. You know, I was listening to another kind of a fire for faith devotion, and it was from a guy named Pastor Ray Johnston, and got a chance to hear him uh, a couple years ago at one of our conferences, and he uh, is the pastor of a large church in the Bay Area in San Francisco called Bayside Church, and, and he was describing a time when him and his wife coming home from vacation, and they had their two little boys, and and the one uh, boy was lost in the airport. And he describes how nothing else mattered at that point than finding their boy. Becky and I were leaving to the store just the other day, and, and we were going to take our youngest with us, and he pleaded with us to stay at home alone. And, and this was an interesting request because uh, our youngest does not like to be alone, does not like to stay on his own at home. Sometimes he would stay home with his brother and those kinds of things without us. But that's an interesting request. So we talked about it and gave him all the parameters, you know, lock the door and be aware of the dog and, and, and those kinds of things because the dog is more sensitive to people around. And, and, and don't answer the door for anybody. You know, we give all these instructions. So we felt comfortable in his request and, and said, okay, and there's a little bit of grumbling, but we took care of that. And so we thought well, we were going to be gone just for about an hour. Upon our arrival back home, no Davy. In the midst of those first 30 seconds, you're, you're positive that you're going to find him sitting in another room with his headphones on, right? He couldn't hear our call. Maybe he was out in the garage, perhaps hiding somewhere just for fun. Whatever, uh, in those first handful of seconds, you think, oh, it's, it's fine. But then those 30 seconds pass and we don't find him. Uh, in the next 30 seconds, your, your blood's starting to boil, right, if you will. And, and things are getting more concerning to you as you continue to search and find nothing. So at this point, I jump into the car and Becky starts to make phone calls to neighbors and friends. And, and I race around the neighborhood a couple times and I come back home, still nothing. Folks, has this ever happened to you? In the angst of that moment, something serious has happened and nothing else matters to you but taking care of that, that problem. And, and so as the phone calls are out and the craziness are, is happening, we get a phone call from our neighbor and, it, and it's Rita Sternell. <laughs> And, and the Ruiz family, they actually have Davy with them. And, and it's at that point, after praying to God and searching him out and, and, and sweating like anything else, that what, we find out that the worst has not happened to our boy and he is safe. Apparently a scary delivery driver had knocked on the door and, and freaked Davy out enough to where he opened the sliding door with one shoe on and dove over the fence into the Ruiz's home. <laughs> but after we got the news of him being okay and drilling him about his, what happened to him, for us, nothing else mattered. The things of the day, the things of the season, 
nothing else mattered. And, and to me, it really reminded me that the only thing that matters is my family. The only thing that matters is my relationship with the Lord. All the things that consume us, folks, really do not matter. You know, in Matthew 6, he says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all those other things that consume us, things we're thinking about food, we're thinking about what we're going to wear, or, or, or we're, we're concerned about finances, where's the money going to come from? He says, it's going to be given to you. Seek first his kingdom. Let's make the main thing the main thing, even in these crazy times of Christmas. Thanks, folks. We appreciate it. We'll see you again real soon.